you will live in the overflow you are going to live in the overflow you're not going to live in a land of lack you're not going to live in a land of insufficiency you're not going to live in a land of lord bar you will live in the land of overflow why don't you say that with me you will live in the land of overflow nothing missing will be in your life nothing lacking will be in your life nothing broken shall be in your life family you are going to live in the overflow i came to tell somebody today i came to confirm this to somebody today i came to encourage your heart i came to encourage your soul and your spirit to let you know that you are going to live in the overflow you are you are going to have an amazing life you're going to have a great life tests and trials hits all of us we are all going to be tested we're all going to be tried but whenever you come out of this you are going to be like gold god has to put us in the fire so that we can be tested so we can be tried what is he testing what is god proving when he tests us he's proven our faith your faith is on trial this is nothing personal towards you souls of god it is your faith that god is purging glory to God you will live in the overflow you're gonna live in the overflow you are nothing is gonna be missing in your life nothing is gonna be broken in your life family it is going to be shalom in your life you're gonna be whole God said I'm gonna make you whole God said I'm gonna make you complete this is why you're healing because you don't need anybody to make you complete you don't need the money to make you complete you don't need the house. You don't need the car. You don't need the marriage. They're all good. But God said, I'm going to prove to you that you don't need this. I'm going to prove to you you don't need nobody but me. All you need is God. And God is going to heal you. Then God is going to add these things to you. He's going to heal you. And God said, I'm going to add these blessings to you. God is going to allow you to live in the overflow. I want you to know everything that you've done. God has written it down. God has a recording secretary in heaven, souls of God. Everything that you have done, God has written it down. God knows what you have done. He tells us to bring him in remembrance of his word. He doesn't have a memory problem. He wants you to remind him of what he says. This is why it's a good thing to do what God says. This is why it's a good thing to obey the Lord. Because God is going to put all of us in situations where we're going to need God. You need God when you think you don't need him. Did you hear me? You need God when you think you don't need him. And you better have something to tell God. Just like Hezekiah when the prophet came. And God gave him a word that, that, that today you better get your house in order because you're going to die today, Hezekiah. But before the prophet can get out of the walls of the palace, my God, God changed his mind. You know why God changed his mind for Hezekiah? But God, Hezekiah reminded God of his life. He reminded God of what he has done, how he served him. We have to have something to tell God. We got to have something to remind God, family, not that he has forgotten, but we will be put in a position at some point in our life. Glory to God. You're going to live in the overflow. You're going to live in the overflow. You don't need anything tangible to make you feel good. You deserve it all by yourself. You don't have to wait till you get the, the relationship. You don't have to wait till you get that person. No, God wants you to know who you are right now. God said, you come from me. I made you in my likeness. I made you in my image. You have to know who you are. You have to know who you are. You have to know who God is. You got to know who you belong to. You serve an amazing God. You serve a loving father. You serve a great God. He's powerful. He's all-knowing family of God. Wherever you're trying to go in your life, God say, I'm already there. He's waiting on you and I. Get going. Get moving. God loves you. And you're going to live in the overflow, God said. You're going to live in the overflow. Yes, you are family of God. A faithful man will always abound in the blessings of the Lord. People can't stop your shine. People can't stop your growth. People can't stop your success. People can't stop your happiness. People cannot stop you from progressing. They can't stop your productivity. They cannot stop anybody from loving you. If somebody is with you that has listened to somebody else, that has caused them not to like you, not to honor you, not to respect you, not to love you. They were the wrong person, family. God loves you. 
And God is going to show you what the overflow is. And he's going to teach you. He's going to train you how not to get in these situations. Sometimes God will allow us to get in these situations. Because how will we know that he's a healer if we never got sick in our body? How will we know that God is a deliverer? He's Jehovah Jireh. How will we know these things if we never had a need? If we never had lack? It is not personal what you are going through with. God is testing your faith. Your faith is on trial. You're going to live in the overflow. I don't care what nobody say, what God says. He's asking you, what report are you going to believe? Whose report are you going to believe today? Will you believe the report of the Lord? And how do you see yourself? Do you see yourself as a grasshopper? Or do you see yourself as an overcomer from the lion of the tribe of Judah? How do you see yourself? God said you're going to live in a land of overflow. You're not going to live in a land of lack. Wherever you are right now, did you know you can sow your way out of anything? I'm a living witness. I'm a living testimony. Seed time and harvest is absolutely amazing. But I want you to understand this. Whenever we sow seeds, make sure the heart is right. Make sure we have no ulterior motives that are not good that's attached to that seed. Because if you have an, a negative ulterior motive attached to that seed, it's going to hinder the progress of that seed. It's going to hinder the fertilization of that seed. So make sure when you are putting a seed in the ground, the, the land that you planted it in, it is fertile. And you make sure that your heart space, the soil of your heart is fertile. You don't want to hinder your own life. You don't want to hinder your own progress. You don't want to hinder your own productivity. That's one thing about God. We can't rush God. I don't care how much we cry, how much we pray, how much we lay our pl plate down, how much we call that prayer partner, how much we declare, decree. Everything is going to happen in God's time, and it's going to happen in God's season. What if God doesn't give you the house? What if God doesn't give you the money? What if God doesn't open that door for you? Will you trust him to do something better? Will you still serve him? Will you still obey him? Will you still love him? See, God is testing the heart of us, family. God is testing. And when God sees that our heart space is in the wrong place, honey, we're going to stay in the fire a little bit longer. You're going to stay in the fire. You're going to stay in the fire until he sees himself in you and I. If God sees anything in us that is not like him, honey, we're going to stay in the fire until we are fully purged. We got to be like King David. We got to be able to tell God honestly and willingly, Father, search my heart. If you find anything in my heart, purge it. Wash me. Make me clean. We have to pray these prayers. When you're spiritually mature, you are praying these prayers. These kind of prayers that God would desire that we please Him. God is not our Santa Claus. He is not. We don't make a list to God. Are you faithful to God? Are you faithful to God? How do you feel? How would you feel if a person was unloyal to you, unfaithful to you, and only called you when you had a need? Haven't you experienced that? I have. And you know why God allows us to go through life like this and experience this? Because we have been unfaithful to God. We have cheated on God. Oh, glory to God. We got to repent. And when we repent, I don't mean give God an apology. You know, people give you an apology and some people get this mixed up with repentance. An apology and repentance are two different things. An apology is when I tell you I'm sorry. Repentance means my word and my actions are the same. When you repent, honey, you change. We change all the way around the board when we repent. We have to repent for hurting God. We have to repent for cheating on God. We have to be repentant in our hearts because we've been disloyal to God. We've been unkind to God. We've been unfair to God. And God is going to let us know how that feels. Feels. You remember the prophet Hosea? And God allowed him to marry a whore. God allowed him to marry a prostitute. Can you imagine God's man, God prophet? Why would he allow the prophet to marry a whore and to cause him to stay there and not to leave? Because God wants all of us to know what it feels like. To be disloyal, to be cheated on, and to love you through that. 
God has loved all of us through our unfaithfulness and our disloyalty. He has loved us. So we have to reciprocate all of this back to God. We want what's in God's hand, but God said, do you really want me? You want what's in my hand, but do you really want me? God knows your heart is being purged, family. You know what that feels like for somebody that want just what you have and not you. God said, unless you drink this cup, he said, you have no part with me. And you are telling people just that. If you don't want all of me, you can't have a portion of me. And you are within your rights. God said, when your heart is purged, you are going to live in the overflow. You will live in the land of overflow. You will not live in the land of lack. Don't you know your season of crying is going to be over? Your season of sadness is going to be over. Nothing lasts forever. The storm doesn't last forever. You think of a physical storm, a hurricane. The sun will shine again. You're going to make it, family. You're going to make it. God sees everything that you are going through with. He knows how long you've been in that situation. He knows that. You don't have to tell God what's going on in your life because he already knows. Just thank God and give him praise for making a way out of no way for you. Just thank God and give him praise for giving you another opportunity. Because if the blood is running warm in your veins today, you have another opportunity to do what you did not have an opportunity to do before. You have another opportunity. Take that opportunity and let God show you how powerful he is, how mighty he is. You're going to live in the land of overflow. Nothing going to be missing in your life. Nothing like it, nothing broken in your life. God is training you. He is teaching you to stand on your own two feet and love being by yourself first. You love being by you first. Sometimes you want somebody else in your life. For what? They don't make you whole. That person is not going to make you complete. It is not another person's responsibility. It's not another person's job to make you happy. It is your responsibility to make yourself happy. And how do you do that? Through the loving eyes of God. How God loves you, you need to receive that. God is going to love you through somebody. God is going to send you somebody to love you just like he loves you. Did you know that? Yes, you may be attracted to the physical, but don't choose anybody superficially. What they look like on the outside. outside. You fall in love with a person's spirit. You fall in love with a person's spirit if their spirit is like God. I don't care what they look like. I don't care how many muscles they have. I don't care how much curves they have, honey. Glory to God. Don't you be superficial because you're going to lose. You're going to lose. I love y'all so much, family. I wanted to let you know that you're going to live in the land of overflow. You are. All the details of your life. God say, I'm working all of this stuff out for you. You got to trust God. Trust him. Whenever you can't trace God, God say, trust me. Whenever you don't know what God doing, God say, trust me. Whenever you can't feel me, God say, trust me. He said, because I'm working. God is working whenever you don't think he's working. He's doing something good on your behalf whenever you can't see it. This is where your faith has to kick in. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things that is not seen. If it's seen physically, it's not your faith. If you can't see it, it's your faith. So pull it out of the realm in the spirit and manifest it right here in the natural world. I love you, family. Be encouraged in God. Be encouraged. Stay hooked up to God. Stay hooked up to some good people in this season of your life because this is a very important season in your life. You're going through transition. You're going through changes. You're going through purging, but you're going through this for a reason. Reason. You're going to get to this next place. You're going to get to an amazing place. But God has to make sure that everything old has dropped off of us. He has to make sure all of this dead weight and these dead people that we had walking with us are left behind. They can't come. You got to make a choice. It's either them or it is your future. What are you going to choose today? It is your prosperity. Are you going to hang on to something and somebody that's draining the life out of you? You got to choose. You can't have it both ways. You got to choose. If you want better, you got to do what you need to do. If you want something different in your life, you have to be willing. You got to have enough courage. You have to have enough strength. You have to have enough faith. You have to have enough tenacity and wisdom. 
to do what you've never done before. You may have the knowledge, but you need the wisdom. God said, if I give you the money, do you have the wisdom to keep it and multiply that money? Ask for wisdom. Ask for wisdom. Because wisdom is the principal thing, not just the knowledge. God's teaching you. He's purging you. He's doing amazing things for you, family. I wanted to let you know today before I go that you're going to live in the land of overflow, not like this is just for a season. It's for a reason of why you're going through this. You're coming out of this. I don't care who said you weren't coming out. I don't care how long it has looked and appeared to people that you've been in this situation for years and years and years. Look at the woman with the issue of blood. But she heard about a man that was in town. And she said, if I could just touch the hem of his garment, glory to God. This is where your faith has to touch it, has to come in, family. Glory to God. If I could just get in the presence of God, if I can get in the presence of God, shut everybody out, shut everybody out in this season of your life. Get along with God, get into the presence of God because God is going to speak to you. We know that God gives our people to speak into our life, but you need that personal relationship with God for yourself. Never depend on just a person to get a word. Pray over every word that you get, souls of God. But God will send people like us to speak into your life, but develop that intimate and that personal relationship with God for yourself because when you stand before the Father he's not going to ask you anything about me he's going to ask you everything about you and what did you do with your life I got to go I love you God wanted me to remind you you're going to live in a land of overflow let's go love your family don't get scammed here don't get scammed on our channel I love y'all so much bye bye